One more round. Come on, put your hands together. Walk out of your seat. Hug somebody. Show some love in Jesus' name. be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Don't sit too far from other people. Feel like a family. Get up closer. We are not many in number because this is the eve of Thanksgiving. Most folk are preparing, traveling. But I want to thank all of you that came out tonight to be with your pastor. I really do. And I often try to tell you all, and I mean it from my heart, that this is my favorite day of the week. And I actually love my church. I love our members. Why don't y'all tell each other that you love one another? That would be nice. No parent is happier than coming home to a peaceful house. Can I get a witness? No one is happier coming on that the brothers and sisters get along and that they don't have to come home and break up fights. Amen. That's my first member I ever took in. First member I ever took in was a millennial. No, she's an alpha. And she has been my longest standing member up to date. And she has grown tremendously. If you've seen her over the years, Rose has grown tremendously. Uh, Shabak, we have visitors very quickly. I want to... Visitors coming out on a Thanksgiving Eve. I'm excited. This particular person is from Apopka. They are guests of Shanice Wallace. Where is Shanice Wallace? Stand so we can thank God for Shanice. I'm excited when people go out and witness. Uh, now, I don't know how to say this name. I know how to say Beasley. But is it Atia or Ate? At Atia? Atia Beasley, we are glad to have you. Our next guest, all the way from Champions Gate, Florida, they're guests of Sarah Campbell. Stand, Sarah. I remember Sarah. Oh, I remember Sarah. I guess I'm going to suppose might be her daughter. Yeah, they didn't say it, and the daughter's like, no, yes, you are, boo. <laughs> Hannah Campbell, stand, Hannah. <laughs> I hope you play some type of sports because you're tall. Help her, Lord. Help her do something with them pretty looks and tall height. Lord, Lord. Help her. Then, all the way from Winter Haven, Florida, this person uh, is a guest of the White family. Where are the Whites? Where are they? Stan, I see. Sister Erica, this is her mother, Brenda Givens, please. Thank you, Mother Givens, for coming to our little uh, church here and spending time with us. 
Amen. We're going to definitely have a preacher sound check by next week. We're going to do this. Amen. Y'all going to stop sounding better than me. All, all that music sound better than me. Y'all going to stop sounding better than me. A amen. We thank God for all, all excuse me, I had to go, I, I had a moment. All right. But I want to thank, thank, thank God for uh, the Curry family being with us on tonight. Elder Charles Stan, we're praying for him and his family, are we not? His grandmother's name is Grandma Curry, not Lewis. It is Curry, and we want him to know that we are in sincere prayer for him as he goes through what he's going through. Um, put our de declaration or our mission statement on the screen. I should have had uh, Deacon Cleveland's son come say it, but I'm going to wait till Sunday. Y'all get them ready on Sunday. Let's go. Let's speak this. Remember the relationship between the pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church. Berlin got it. Memorized. So does uh, son here. I was watching their mouths. They have it like it should be had. Put it up again. Let's do it one more time and let's read it in unison. Let's read it in concert. Let's read it. Let's be spiritually co connected. And you that are E-members, y'all read it as well. Say it out loud over the screen. Type it in the lower thirds. Let's read. Remember the relationship between the pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church. Now clap on that and let's move forward. Thanking God for our assistant pastor being with me tonight. Thanking God for the associate pastor coming in on this evening. There are those who I excuse because they are hosting Thanksgiving. I didn't expect as many as I see. Y'all have made me proud. The, our our ex executive pastor is very private, but she had a procedure, major procedure done on her back. She got it resolved. She's out. She's recovering. And we should thank God and send love to her. Anytime you are cut, burned, snipped in the back area, that's very serious. And she's had over 28 surgeries. And God keeps her here with us. And we appreciate it. Touch somebody and tell them, I want you to get a miracle on this month. Want to let y'all in on something, then I'm going to show you how good God is. I lost my entire Bible study notes tonight. Only two people know. Izzy and my cabinet, Elder Patty. They know, because when I touched it, it froze, vanished, and it was erased. Y'all don't feel sorry, huh? Y'all, I mean, what? Oh, yeah, I said it demolished my heart because I take hours, hours. When I say hours, hours, putting things together for them that I love. But I wrote a teach sermon in five minutes. Y'all going to get this. And I wonder if, it, 
if I didn't have great study habits and a knowledge of the word of God, I would have sent them in here and say, close service, tell them I can't talk. I would have lied so we can get out of here. But thanks be to God that God keeps me safe. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Galatians verses chapter number 6, verse 7 and 8. The scriptures are the same. Even though there are two uh, chapters missing from tonight's teaching, which you'll get next Wednesday, the bulk of the message is the same. So can I ask for your prayers tonight? Galatians 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth. Y'all not talking. That shall he also reap. I want to read it again. And then I want y'all to go to verse 8, you that are my technicians. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Matthew chapter 18, verses 22 through 35, nothing deep about this text as far as in its reading, but it is a parable. While you're turning to it, we also want to pray for Mother Tracy Hagens, the devil tried to take her life on Sunday, but the Lord brought her back and she is recovering at this moment. Let us pray for her daughter, Jess, because she's basically the only caretaker of her mother. I want to thank Deaconess, I call her prophet at time, Tracy Cleveland, I heard she rebuked death and prayed over that woman till the devil had to back off of Dr. Tracy. So from one Tracy to another, y'all ain't talking to me. We thank God. Matthew 18, I'm going to start using her on Sunday mornings to pray as well now. Matthew 18, verse 22 through 35, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. This was a question asked when a disciple said, how many times shall we forgive those who trespass and get on our nerves? They said seven times a day. His answer was seventy times seven per day. Look at somebody tell them, that's a lot of forgiveness now. Let me talk to those who will communicate. Seven times a day is a lot for me. Especially if it's the same person. But when they asked him, and I need my young adults to push me, his... Instructions were 70 times 7, which is what? 400 and what? 490? You sure? 490. That's almost 500 times a day. I brought that scripture in because it's connected to the story, but let me tell you why I brought the scripture in for two people who will jump then be seated. It's because uh, your seed is affected by your unforgiveness. 
God bases how much he'll give you on how much you forgive. That word forgive has another meaning to it. And the meaning of that word is debt or trespasses. Forgive us those who trespass, forgive us our debt. And when God, when you forgive someone, God finds a debt that you have. And he finds a supernatural way, I don't hear nobody, of forgiving that as well. Every time you forgive people, God's forgiving a bill. Will you tell somebody, I forgive you? Now, don't lie. But practice makes perfect. You will see I'm not lying because 23 says, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account, that's a business term, of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, another business term. Reckon accounts. Settle accounts. Weigh pros and cons, assets, liabilities, making sure that the ledger is properly done. Talk to me. When he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, here goes all business, which owed him. So when he did his checks and balances, someone was in debt to him. I'll say it again. Someone was in debt to him. They're in debt, 10,000 talents, 25. But for as much as he had not to pay, the person that was in debt had no money. His Lord, the king, commanded him to be sold. Not just him, his wife, not just her. See, y'all not feel his children. Not just that. All he had, and still he owed a balance. Payment to be made. That's a lot. Let me read to you, because you're not talking, that his family has value, but not enough value to pay his debt. So I'm going to say something huge and wait till Sunday to preach it. Stop relying on your family. Love them. Raise them. Nurture them. But if they don't have the money to get you out of jail, your family member better have a friend. You better teach your family how to make relationships. Because if you ain't rich and you're falsely accused for something that you will need an attorney for, you're going to have to build a relationship real fast that should have been built a long time ago. Stop making your family your world. Your family is your responsibility. The Bible said, make friends of them that have money. Then it said, be kind. Then it says, if you want a friend, first make yourself friendly. It never said you had to be friends with your family. Now, I want all of you that said this to keep it. I will not put any salt in the game. But one day, prayerfully, I will get married prayerfully. And I must make this announcement now so that you'll understand it later. My wife will not be my best friend. That's not happening. Because what if her and I break up, who can we go to that can help us come back together? When you're betrayed by your best friend, you're going to need somebody you can really trust. No, no, your wife don't have to be your best friend. She's you. The two are one. And you ain't your best friend. Ooh, 
Most of you are your worst enemy. That's how you got in debt. You are not looking out for yourself. Am I teaching or am I playing? It's okay. They know that that's the only person you're in love with. But to be in love don't mean that's got to be my best friend. You're my best choice. You're what's best for me. But I need somebody outside of you so that if you hurt me, I can go to somebody else who can talk sense to me and say, go reconcile, resolve. Oh, yeah. Somebody's voice has to be stronger than her hurt. Or I ain't going back. And because some of y'all staring at me like you're crazy, it lets me know you didn't have premarital counseling. And you didn't have post counseling. I hear you. You want me to mess up my sermon. Well, can she have a best friend outside of you? Absolutely. Because I want to call her best friend. Hey, babe, I need help. Come talk to your girl. Of course. You don't get to choose your family. You don't get to choose who your parents were. But your next group of people, you've got to choose them. And your wife is not a choice anymore. She's family. I don't care. Keep yours the way you got it. Just don't come to me for no money. Especially if I ain't your friend. Oh, where, where were we? 25. For as much as he had not to pay, they took his wife, children, all he had, payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me. I will pay thee all. I wish I had some communicators. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion, which then reveals to us that a reading that this apology, this worship was sincere. You got to watch those who are professional abusers and users. They know how to put it on, take it off. They be humble after they get the money, they cuss. I mean, you got to watch these people that can switch like they're schizophrenia and bipolar. You need somebody, if I'm helping you, I want you to know my help is sincere and I need who I'm helping to be sincere. What's sincerity? If you can pay it back, tell me when and keep your word. If you cannot, let me know that in advance so I can determine whether I want to do this or not. Because based upon your sincerity or insincerity, will determine whether we ever have a relationship ever again. If I have anyone that agrees with me, wave, because y'all look hungry, and it ain't Thanksgiving yet. Verse 27, the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion, loosed him, not just loosed him, Charles, but forgave him the debt. Whatever that amount was that he had to give up his wife, his children, his house, and everything, this Lord, this person, this employee, the one that gave him the money, must have so much money that he's willing to say, forget payment. Just do better from this day forward. Will you tell your neighbor that? Just do better from this day forward. Now the man that got forgiveness of all of that debt, we're about to read about him because y'all going to miss it. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence. See, this is a good story. You just got forgiveness of a huge bill. And now that you're forgiven, you're going out to attack someone else. Mm. 
laid hands on him. Look at this one. Took him by the throat saying, pay me my money. The person that owed him took the same posture, fell down at his feet, but saw them saying, have patience, same prayer with me, and I'll pay thee all. What's missing from verse 29 for a young person who will jump and wants to be debt free is he didn't worship. No, I know worship is the key. I'm preaching Sunday, but the problem is uh, it's hard to worship who does not forgive. Because the other man who he owed more to didn't touch him. He didn't lay hands on him. It's easier for me to help somebody who's supporting me rather than somebody talking about me behind my back. Well, I heard you gave it to him. Why are you not giving it to me? Look at your attitude. You even have kids. I have several of them who all feel like they should have equal rights to me, equal access, equal money, equal access to my car. All of them should have keys to my house. And that's just not the way it go. And the reason being for two folk who will catch it that's grown, all of them don't clean my cars. All of them don't help me cook. All of them don't say, do you need any help around the house? You have to be sincere. Understanding that when you have access to other people's hard work, that you don't take their hard work for granted. It minimizes the person's desire to assist you. Same servant went out. It seemed like it's only me and Elder Curry here. I should have did a Zoom. Same servant. The young people said, no, they ain't talking because it's probably them right now who take for granted eating, going in the fridge, don't put the top on, drinking out the bottle, bringing your food in your bedroom, leaving the dirty cup on the thing, then talking about we got roaches. No, you invited them. The issue is. Then we find stuff under your bed. What you doing searching my room? It ain't your room. It's my house that I've given you a room in. You don't have a room till you start paying rent. And I'm going to charge you according to the zip code. We got to charge you according to the market. If you'd have lived in my city without me, how much would you be paying? I thought I had grown-ups talking, but I don't. Grabbed him by the throat, said, give me what you owe. Fellow servant fell down, minus worship, besought him, saying, have patience with me, I'll pay thee all. And he would not. But went and cast him in the prison till he should pay the debt. How do I pay the debt behind bars? Like, I don't understand women who want child support locking up the baby daddy. Now he got a record and can't get a job. All right, I'm going to leave that alone because that seemed to be sensitive too. We verse 30, he would not. Went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants, the one who was locked up and locked up, saw what was done, they were very sorry. They felt sorry for the boy. They went and told it to their Lord what the guy who was forgiven did to the person that owed him. Y'all, this is not snitching. When you love people and you know the person that hurt you is lying to another person, the way you pay your debt to the other person is to warn them that they're about to pay the biggest price of their life. That's not snitching. That's me stopping you 
from doing to the net and the net, y'all quiet, and the net, what you did to me. Let me talk to real people. Game recognize game. I saw two faces of people with a spirit that look very discontented with that revelation because it's you. Every time I preach, it's to somebody. I got a real character in this church filling the role. That's every time. Verse 31, so when the fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, came and told their Lord what was done. The Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, Oh, thou wicked servant. See, I forgave you all your debt because you desireth me, you worship me, you kept on pleading. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion y'all, on your fellow servant even as I had pity on thee? I don't understand how folk who are talked about talk about people. That people who have been hurt go out and hurt people. Let me talk to talk. The Bible said, do unto others as you would have them. Not as they do unto you, as you would have them to do unto you. You got to keep treating folk right even when they treat you wrong. And every time you do that, God targets a bill that you have. Y'all know. And he says, I'm going to supernaturally assist them in the area that their resources cannot assist them. It's bad to be broke and unforgiving. An unforgiving person and broke should not be in your company. That's a bill. I ain't going. I ain't going. You go. If she going, then I don't want to eat. Well, you weren't paying in the first place. When it was just me and you, I was paying. Now you're going to turn me down like you hurting me? No, no. I just saved 90 something dollars for tax. I'm glad that I see how ugly you really are because if you can't forgive who I'm bringing, that means you don't like my choice, but you like my money. You don't respect my wisdom, my understanding, my time, my tenure. I know who I've invited better than you do. So if you don't like them and you know I do, then maybe you don't like me either. Boy, them young people should be talking to me. Verse 32, the Lord, after he called him, said, you're a wicked servant. I forgave you all your debt because you desires me. Should have now that have, should have not you have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even, that, even as I had pity on you. The last two verses. This is serious. And his Lord was wroth or angry and decided to reverse the decision he made. Y'all missing this. And gave him to his tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise, y'all miss it. So likewise shall my heavenly father, y'all do also unto you. If you get blessed and don't bless somebody, if you get forgiven and don't forgive somebody, God is going to treat you like you treat one another. Oh, y'all don't want to read it. You don't want to read it. You're looking like this is challenging. So likewise shall my heavenly father also do also unto you if Ye from your hearts forgive not everyone 
his brother, y'all act like you don't want to read it, for their trespasses. God will put people in your life that get on your nerve just to see how serious you are about needing his assistance. Before he gives you who he has for you to marry, he'll give you three counterfeits to see whether you can forgive them, say God bless you, walk off, and not try to kill them so that when he sends the right one, you'll be like, look what God has done. But if you keep failing with a fraud, oh, y'all, this is a fraud alert. Now hear nobody talk. If you keep failing with a fraud, You're going to have to repeat the situation over and over again. We're talking about reaping what you sow. I have not gotten to seed being money, but let me see if y'all can catch my last three pointers and see if you'll jump two or three of you that are learning. What happens when seed is not money or resources, but when seed is yourself. Looking for what? Isaac was the seed of Abraham. What happens? Oh, y'all. Jacob was the seed of Isaac. When Israel prayed, they prayed to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Y'all still not talking over here. Jesus was one of the seeds of David. In order for pregnancy to be correct most of the time until modern day uh, medicine came along, a woman would be pregnant when she received seed from a man. When her system, her body, after she ovulates and etc., I don't want to get into that, receive seed, I'm going to see who screamed, the cycle stops. And some of you are in a terrible cycle because you have not planted seed. When that woman gets pregnant, I'm going to see who screamed, you have given her seed of yourself. I feel like I'm on my Zoom, so I'm going to keep going because y'all ain't talking to me. I am the seed of Aaron Hall. Someone else could have raised me and I'd have called him dad. Whoever raised you, takes care of you, put a roof over your head, that's your father and your mother. But at the end of the day, you are the seed of... So you don't want to meet your real father. You want to meet the sower. Because the real father is the one that gave you a real life. Y'all ain't... See, it got quiet. I just want to... Me... Stop crying over what you never saw. Your actual father, mother, are the ones that gave you an opportunity to have a healthy life. But what you want to meet is where you came from, not where you're going to. Because who you have is taking you somewhere. What you want to meet left you behind. So you've got to go backwards to meet the sower of seed. If you sow good seed yourself the right way, it will germinate into a harvest of healthy relationships. You ought to clap right there, even you bad people. But if you sow unhealthy seed, 
All you will get for relationships are weeds. And let me talk about that for 30 seconds for a talker. Weeds start off looking like grass. Then they start taking over the territory while underneath they're killing the grass. If you and somebody met and they became everything you wanted fast, you better check that as a weed. Because grass don't grow fast. Weeds sprout up without seed. You've seen nobody plant weeds from a seed. They just pop up. And if one man jump for me, I'll be happy. They only pop up where healthy grass is. I've got a weed in my yard that I watched grow, but I never thought it was a weed because I'm not from here. So today, yesterday, I told my landscaper, I said, man, this tree is growing past the side of my house and my window, and I don't have a view no more. He looked at me because he's from Vietnam. And he said to me, he said, no, no tree. I said, what? He said, that's weed. I said, but it's as big as a tree. He says, uh, that's what it does. It impersonates. And some of y'all ain't got friends, you got impersonators. And you have sown into them yourself. And they are now choking like the man did to the one that owed him the life out of you. They got nerve to be funky with you and you paid their rent? You mad with me? You hungry because you don't like what I cook? Go buy groceries. I need to understand where some of y'all weeds come from. Be careful. What did I say? Who you sow yourself into. What does the saying you reap what you sow actually means? It means that your actions and choices come with consequences. Negative and positive. Are y'all talking grown-ups? It emphasizes the idea that what you put into the world, whether it's kindness, hard work, negative behavior, will eventually come back to you. Talk to me, educators. That's where we get the word reciprocation. So if you have been a professional impersonating hypocrite to somebody, one day somebody's going to be better than you at what you do. And it's coming back to get you. Just like the one that forgave didn't forgive, his Lord went back and put him back in that cycle. You're going to get what you give. You may not get it for 10 years. Y'all ain't talking. God might be so much God that he waits until you think you've succeeded and got away and then God says, now let me send something to you because you have not learned your lesson by how you're still treating other people. What does the prayer say that our Father's prayer? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let me read it from Luke. Y'all ain't talking. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. So he's saying, forgive me my sins as I forgive the sins of other people. That means your list ain't based upon grace and mercy. 
You must give to get. Yeah. Essentially, it is a reminder that your actions have a ripple effect. The choices you make today will shape your tomorrow. If I'm teaching well, let me know. I'm almost done. There was a word out that some of you should remember that I want to bring into our teaching. It's called karma. No, not comma, not a punctuation, karma. K-A-R-M-A, spell that please. It's a concept found in Indian religions. Not Christians. Hinduism, Buddhism, Schism, Jainism. It refers to the principle of cause and effect. An individual's actions, whether good or bad, influence and shape their future experiences. Some of you have not met some of us because who we really are, we can no longer be. Because if we be who we are, it will make God not be who he is for me. I had to slow talk that because it ain't in my notes, but, it's, but I remember it. If I make you bring out the worst me, you are more God than he is. Because uh -uh. why can't the God that made me make me respond in a manner that will bless me later when what you do to me makes me just go crazy, which means you are actually him. Yep, five done got quiet. I know why, because you react and respond too easy to them. Those ain't tears of hurt. Those are tears of I wish I can kill him and get away with it. Every cry ain't hurt. It's I want to get you. And let me be a good teacher. Some of you don't deserve to live. As much as you've done, you see how certain folk laugh, let who did it to them do it to you. Let them do it to your child. I've had practice over the last two years of learning how to be a better me because God has put women, not dating women, not married women, women of all sorts in my life that talk back. I'm some very loudly. Some with all of the dramatization. Some who have the unmitigated goal to say, I don't care who you are. I'm, I'm, I'm. See, I can't get no real people. Um, that's people that I normally have to cut off right away. Before you make me do something, say something that you can use against me that will kill the future of my momentum because I let your activity bring actions out of me. Yep. And the Lord won't take them away. I don't know how they got my number. I don't know how they got my inbox. The Lord won't take them away. And they text you. And it can ruin your whole day. Y'all gonna miss it because I'm teaching. Because words are seeds. And
And when you are open to people and what they say to you, you become soil for their seed. And the seed was meant to be poisonous. It germinates. And even though you're having a good day all day, that one five-minute text, one sentence that you wish you never read, a person you wish you never said hello to, The Lord said, I'm leaving all the folk that get on your nerve, Todd, in your life. He said, and I have the right to, and I asked him nicely. What's the grounds of your reasoning? And he saith unto me. For three folk will catch it. As much as you praise me for being debt free, being that I've forgiven your debts. I need to create people for you to forgive. Look how quiet it got. If you want to know if God is hearing your prayer, look at who don't like you. And add up like a ledger. Did I do anything? Is this my fault? And if the answer is no, 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 that person is there as a receipt to the prayer that you prayed. Somebody's still mad at me. How is your future present wife your best friend and your last wife was your enemy? Let me go forward. And that's versa vice, vice versa. How is your new husband your best friend and your last one who you got kids by your enemy? Who chose him? Why did you receive seed from him? Words of his mouth or from the lower extremities to give him children? Because both of those areas have seed. Look how quick this Bible study. In essence, karma suggests that actions we'll take in life or the actions we take in life will have consequences, positive or negative. It agrees with you reap what you sow. It's a cynical concept, Patty, where actions lead to reactions, then it shapes one's destiny. So what you're praying for, you have to be ready for. And what gets you ready for it is how you treat other people who don't want to see you get there. God says, I don't want you to be caught up with what I'm doing. I want you to get over uh, uh, what's being done to you. Look how quiet. What I do for you is based upon what's being done to you. And how you handle them will determine what I hand over. Look at somebody, be honest, wake them up, tell them, I got to do better. I'm the problem. I have to do better. If you take a rock and throw it in a lake, where the rock drops, you will then see ripple effects. It'll start from the point of where it happened, y'all know, and start spreading from one little pebble. Bloop. Now what's crazy, and nobody's jump that's made me happy yet, is you're paying more attention to the ripple even after the rock cannot come back up to surface. What they did, they did it. It's done. Don't you become the ripple.
The rock that was thrown in the lake is not created to float. Whoever did it to you is not created to float. They're trying to kill you because it's their nature to sink. They can only survive what they can stand up in. See, slow bus. Y'all slow. And y'all in college. But if you tell them, let's go out to the beach. Let's swim way out to the buoy out there. They'll be like, nah, nah, nah. Now you go out there by yourself. I'm good. I'm going to put my feet right here. I'm not trying to get my hair wet. No. You're afraid because you know the further out you go, the current. Oh, Y'all are missing my sermon. And some of you can't take it. It's not that the water's deep. You can't take what's currently happening. The current is stronger than your past. You don't even give the future enough attention. To understand that what's currently happening is to make me go back to what I used to be versus to what the trial is trying to develop me to become. Think it not strange, thank you, concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened. The Bible said, but rejoice. For tribulation worketh patience. Patience, experience. Experience, hope. Then hope maketh not a shame. Y'all gonna because of the love of God which is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Now, I can't get nobody, no one can forgive. Like the Bible asks us to forgive without the Holy Ghost. You've got to have the Holy Ghost to do what God does. It's not in your human nature. That's why all of the old saints, when they were mad, ready to cuss, they were just like us, just better at it, ready to back, backslide. They said something that we don't say anymore. They say, help me, Holy Ghost. Maybe y'all forgot what your mama said. Help me, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, help me. They spoke to him like who he was. He's a companion. He's not a tongue speaker and a dancer. You are. He is a paraclete. One who walks alongside. He is communication. He's the one that not only says not now, he gives you power not to do it. If you ask him. About to close. Let me give you a story. And thank you for your time. Let me give you a story. I told you one hour and fifth. Well, I said one hour and 15 minutes, didn't I? Hear me and hear me clear. I had a friend. We're not friends anymore. Which is rare for me. Because most of the friends I've ever called friends, I still have them today through hard knocks and everything. No one has been through more hell in a friendship out of all my friends than me and Frank Mixon. We have thrown blows, kicked each other through windows and doors. Please tell them. Now I'm not gonna tell y'all who won because I ain't sure. But we have been through the ups and downs that I know at this time that Mays and Bishop are in my friend circle, if what we went through, I went through with them, they would not be my friend and I would not be neither one of yours. As close as y'all feel you are, you're not, cause we ain't been through hell yet. I don't know how close we are when we go through that.
You see how real that was? And one of them may have gotten offended. Well, who said we have to go through that? No, friendships have to be tested. But I've had no tests with all of my six best friends that I've had with him. And we were fighting one day and it was critical because he's not giving up at all and neither am I. I wanted to. He didn't tell me he did. He kept going. And uh, he just so happened to look at his watch one time and it was 7 o'clock. He said, it's 7 o'clock. We're throwing real blows, Charles Curry. We're not throwing no fake blows. No, for real. We done ruined the house. We're bleeding, punched in the face because whatever started that fight. At 7 o'clock, we both looked and said, we got to finish this later. We got a service to go to. Out of nowhere. And I wanted to make sure he was going to stop. And from that day, we've argued about so many things, even to this present day. But his respect... And my ability to forgive. So he'll give in first because, you, you know, you are my pastor. You are my boy. I respect you. And he does. And that had to be earned. But then I have to be his friend enough to know that what if what he said is right. I got to call him back and tell you it was an X3. It was not an X5. I looked them papers up. You see, what you have to do is you got to know how to repent. Do you know the value of releasing someone from their debt? You may not feel good, but do you know what you just showed them? The love and the mercy of a God, y'all don't hear me, that grants us unconditional pardon. The only God certain people know are your actions. My friend, who's not my friend, we broke up over a $5,000 request. He requested of me $5,000, Elder Kevin, that I had. And that I had to give if I chose. Talk to me. Because look at the mooches. So why you just ain't help them? Because of that attitude right there. You see that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every last one of you. He said, Hall, I said, what's going on, man? He says, I need a favor. Man, we are friends. What's the favor? I need $5,000. Uh, I say, hey, man, let me ask you a question. See, people that want help don't want conversation. See, I can't. They want. Yeah, yeah. Tiffany done woke up. It's my money. I've got questions. $5,000 used to be a whole lot of money. Especially when you ain't got no money at all. See, y'all laughing, but let me make it plain. Half of y'all in here don't have $5,000 saved in the bank. Half of you. That's a fact. Now you look like you do. You drive like you do. You live like you do. But statistics worldwide says over 55%, especially of black people, don't have $5,000 cash saved nowhere. But I had it. I'm not bragging about that. He was my friend. He asked for it. I said, man, let me ask you a question. He said, yeah. I said, man, you got a nice house. It sits on five acres. He said, yeah, man. I said, um, let me say it again because you're going past. You got a nice house on five acres. See, y'all laughing because you ain't got it. 
people that are chuckling, you laughing because right now you ain't successful enough to feel the story. You fighting over your $20 that they didn't give you back. I told him, I said, do you still have your house? Man, of course. I said, you still have your five acres? He said, yeah. I said, four years ago when I came to your house, I gave you a package of something. I said, you remember what it was? He said, yeah. I said, what was it? He said, you gave me a package, and I still don't know why you did, of apple seeds. I gave this African Presbyterian Negro a whole package when I was broke five years ago. Y'all missing this? Someone gave me two packs, and I shared one with my best friend. I said, I said, where, where are the apple seeds? He said, they in the house. I'm closing now. I said, in, in, in the big house? With five acres? He said, hall, oh, because he know I'm a prophet, but he's familiar because he's a friend. Man, get to it. What are you saying? I said, I said, when I first gave you the seed, I didn't give it to the other four guys because they didn't have a place for it. Uh oh, it's getting quiet. I said, I kept my pack because I knew one day I would. I said, uh, where's the seed? Man, just get to the point. He starts getting upset. Right then, I felt his request, his request started dwindling. Wasn't because of the seed, it was because of the attitude, along with you still having what was mine, that you devalued and didn't put to use. So you think you can just ask me for my money, but not respect my seed. Oh, hold on, see See, I just, I just helped five people. You want to reach straight to the cash but not understand what I gave you four years ago. I had done all my homework because I knew one day I would have acres like this and I had done my homework. And I told him, I said, hey man, if you'd have planted them seeds... Way in the back of your house. Way back. Because you got five acres. And just took care of the seed. Y'all ain't. You would have had some apple trees. You wouldn't have had cash, but you'd have had resources. Young. See, before I give you my money, I need to see your management. I cannot just give you what you asked for. The bank don't do it. The car dealership don't do it. Keita, you know what my bank institution told me on today, Bishop? Well, of course, all of my best friends know, but you were working for the classic, so you didn't get the story. So let me bring you up to scale. I wanted to refi something that I had so I could get a lower interest rate. Now, y'all think this ain't preaching, so if you don't like these kind of stories, you don't need no money. What you gonna be talking about? See, if you're gonna get bigger this, consolidate, you should want this type of conversation. Because coming to me for prayer, won't help you as much as coming to me for wisdom. Failure is afraid and stupidity and ignorance is afraid of somebody succeeding. But let me say this. I have great credit, at least compared to what I used to have. I have a little saved. But what I needed refi was going to go down four points. You could save some money. See, I'm talking to people. 
the better your credit, the better your interest rate, and blah, blah, blah. Don't talk to me. Stay broke, yeah? So they told me something I didn't understand. I had to go home, re revisit it, spend two hours for myself. They said, you're a person we would love to hang with and be around and could get anything. Said, but the reason why we can't help you as a lending institution is you have no debt. Y'all going to catch that next week. They said, we needed to see where you were paying something consistently for a long time. Then they told me today, which I love the conversation, when we approve you, we are approving you with this in mind, and I'm going to see who jumps. We will never give you zero interest because you're borrowing our money and we should get something from it. I asked them, because one of my friends is a scholar, I said, well, what if I start with you and I go to another banker to give me some Lord? They said, you have the right to do it. They said, we call those banking holes. I said, like, hole on the street? They said, sleep with anybody that'll do better. And the way you treat your money is normally how you treat people. I'll leave you and get somebody else. You talk like you do your money. I told him I'm going to stay with y'all. It was like, all right. Because I had just started a new relationship with another institution who said they'll give me 3.5. I said, yeah. I told them, they said, how long you been with them? I said, two weeks. Then they called me that H word. I said, watch your mouth. Because I ain't never heard of that before. I stayed at the rate that they gave me. Went home. The phone rang. It's my banker's boss. Her name, Kathy Dunfield. Never met Kathy in my life. Miss Dunfield lives in North Carolina. She said, can I speak to Todd Hall? I normally don't answer my phone. I said, who's this? I don't recognize your number. My name is Kathy Dunfield. I said, how may I help you? Well, the question is, how can I help you? I said, ma'am, I don't know you. I'm from so-and-so lending institution. We see you put in, and we heard that you mentioned that another lending institution was going to be better than us. Now, we are a bank, and they are a credit union. She had all her information. She said, but because I heard that you told so-and-so that you're going to stick with him, I want to match what they say they're going to do. She said, and on top of that, I want to give you a so-and-so commitment letter in case you ever want to do something else. I said, baby, listen, I'm in debt to you. Sometimes you have to stick with what's applying pressure. It's equivalent to anyone in here that wants to get a divorce. My words to you is stay at your bank. You've made too many deposits in that relationship. What y'all need to do is so see, converse better. Stop yelling. Admit you did it for real. 
Women don't leave men for cheating. They leave you for lying. All you got to do is stop being a weed. Because the next person that falls in love with you is falling in love with the fake you you showed her. Because if they knew how you treated your past, your present would not have them in it. Did what I say make sense? Why don't church folk make it? We don't know how to communicate. You're working on money instead of words. And your seed from your mouth will determine the seed in your life. I experienced that today. Let me say this, everyone standing. Let me say this. I've got two minutes left. They gave me the mic right at 8 something or right before 8, 758. Let me say this to three of you who will respect me and say amen. If you do your seed right, your seed turns into fruit. If you understand fruit, I'm going to teach it next Wednesday, but I'm going to see the screen. In the fruit is more seed. After God gives you fruit, you don't have the right to eat the seed. Let me make it very plain one more time. You and God have a seed formation. Y'all have a conversation called prayer. So y'all have a seed formation, right? You and him talk about, I need this job. Then he gives you the job. The job is the fruit from the seed. When you get your paycheck, the seed in there... A portion of that belongs to the person that helped you get fruit. When you don't do that, you reverse the order. And now God throws you into a system like the king did that ungrateful boy. I don't do it no more. My father scared me out of it when I was young. No, I can't remember who scared me out of it. But back in the day, I still love watermelon, but I used to eat it in the sea. I used to swallow it because I got too tired of picking it out. And one of my relatives said something to me. He said, you already got water in your stomach. All you need is a little dirt, and your seed going to kill you. Y'all missed it. said, you are made from the dirt. The body is 90% water. You eat the seed. All that seed has to do is try to grow in you, and it's going to kill you. My friend messed up because the seed was not supposed to stay in the house. Last thing. As you hold the hand of a person who's going to be wealthy and saved or saved and wealthy just like you. Every seed from a fruit, tree, vegetable can only produce after its own kind. You cannot need money and pray for it without giving it. You cannot get a friend and pray for one without first being friendly. You must reproduce yourself. One guy told me, he said, I'm effeminate because I'm raised around eight sisters. And I gave him compassion on that because of his scientific approach. He was just talking to me about it. Prophet Hall, and I said, yeah. What you feel, said, people just judge me, but I'm raised around all women. So I'm effeminate. They think I'm gay, but I'm just a little effeminate. I didn't attack him, because if I'd have did that, I would have put weeds in his life, all right, and would have represented, y'all not talking, Jesus in a poor way. Now, I'm talking like this, and my young adults won't talk when I know two of you are contemplating being gay with another woman. So open your mouth the next time I talk. All right, this is very important that you let me wisely help you get back on track. (laughs) 
at least while you're under my supervision. And look at the parents feeling sorry for children. How do you feel sorry? Boy, y'all grew up in the wrong house. My father said, come here. Take your mama's shoes off, right? Take that wig off your head. See, you parents did this because you were busy chasing wealth instead of raising seed. But let me say this. He was concerned. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I looked at him. And the Lord said, tell him this. I had nothing to tell him. Because I'm raising a different <coughs> generation. So I didn't have nothing nice or rude to say. I was not going to hurt his future. And I was not going to misrepresent Christ. So I'm like, he ain't mine. He don't go to this church. He ain't got nothing to do with me. Who your pastor? Go talk to him. Who your parents? Have a talk with him. But he wanted to talk to me. And I just said to him, and he changed. I lied not. It was almost like overnight. All I said to him was, and y'all won't catch it because some of you ain't real. I said, if I was raised with all women, I'd be a pimp. Right? You're going to use them to be what you want to be, and I'm going to use them to stay all man. Now look at the women that shook their head. Why pimp? What else I'm going to be? What was the other example? Let me ask you a question. You rather have an effeminate husband or a man that had pimp on his resume? Let me ask you that. Oh, you ain't got an answer. I know the answer. Because once he give his heart to the Lord, you ain't got to worry about that area, do you? See, some of y'all too holy to be wholesome. The stories have to apply now. This new generation ain't caught up with what you're doing. They want the real deal. Talk to me. See, I was fine with the birds and the bees. Now I'm confused because what they said wasn't right. So I can't teach my kids about birds and the bees. That don't work right. Because I grew up to see how sex dealt with birds and bees. I didn't like none of that. That the bee got to kill the person she had sex with. No, no. That when they get with you, the stinger hits you and they pull away. And the stinger rips the body apart. See, you didn't study. Wasn't nothing pretty about that. I said, where's my EpiPen? I'm allergic to certain women. Yeah. Certain women's sting is just too long. I need an EpiPen. <laughs> when we learn better, no, no, we should do better. Everybody that learns better don't do better. They get offended by learning. My father's 82. He's still learning. Use his phone one way. I had to tell him today, uh, Dad, uh, you're pressing FaceTime. What's that? You're pressing it. That means you want to see my face. Oh. Then he hangs up. <laughs> That's how folk who don't want to learn do you. They hear what you say, know you're right, and then click. That's because you want to run your own world. This world is built on seeds. Everything. Fruit, seeds, chicken, eggs, seeds, babies, seeds. Vegetables, seeds, animal life, seeds, the word of God, seeds, giving, tithing, seeds. And I'm not asking you to sow your money yet. I'm asking you, sow you. 
Invest yourself in someone else and God will alleviate your debt from the area that your money cannot pay. Get an offering, if you will. Don't get a seed yet, because the seed is you. Your offering and how you give it will determine who you are. Get a seed. Play something nice, man. We out. And when you give, smile when you give. I don't want no sad money at all. If you, and if you didn't like what I preached, don't give according to how you feel. Keep it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to believe that this was from Rose. So y'all put Rose, Rose name on there. Thank you for coming, young man. Thank you, Hannah's mama. Thank you so much. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come and when we go. He cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must see. The devil is defeated. We are blessed. Oh, everyone standing. Let me hear you say bless, 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 bless. bless. Speak it over your neighbor. Bless, bless, bless. Let me hear you say bless. bless. One time, y'all. Bless in the city. Hey. Bless when we come. We cast down. The devil is defeated. We are. First Sunday, I want you to come dressed as you feel. There'll be no civic, but come clean. Don't come overbearing, but wear your good stuff. Let's have good church. Um, there was an announcement I felt to make, but I can't remember it, so maybe it's to not be remembered. But pray for your neighbors on tonight. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving on tomorrow. Eat and eat, and then the week after, we all going on a fast. Yes, those who will rock with me, we're going to eat all the way through Monday. Then we're going to start a three-day consecration. It'll be till 6 o'clock for most. If you can go further, go straight. You can have water. You can have tea. You cannot have anything else, especially sugar. We're going to detox after this. 
because we want to live longer. Amen? Amen? So we'll write it up. We'll get it ready and may God heal diabetes, cure diabetes, high blood, cholesterol, cancer. Y'all not talking. Along with that, mental illness as well. They just found out, Curry, look it up because you're astute. They just found out that people who have low cholesterol and are on cholesterol meds, they are the ones who get dementia and Alzheimer's because the brain needs a high level of cholesterol for memory. That was a new found test. So while your cholesterol coming down through meds, your mind is leaving and there's no meds for the mind. So they say the regular numbers is 150, 160, but back in the day they said it was healthy to have 350. Yeah. And that they live to be 90, you dying at 50, 40, and 60. We better check who's trying to bamboozle us. And the way we're going to get healed again is go back to praying over every meal. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I don't mean that quick prayer, bless it. No, no, I'm talking about pray. All right, so have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'm going to try to have it. Let's tomorrow find somebody in your spirit, if you know them, to genuinely forgive and see how fast your bills get paid. Practice that principle and see if it's right. Just be nice when you don't want to be until it becomes a part of who you are. That's how you become building muscle. You weren't born with muscles like that. You kept going in the gym, lifting the weights. Keep being nice until nice is your strength. Amen? Amen. All right, with uplifted hand, right hand, repeat after me. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. All right, show love to each other and be dismissed. Go home and have some sweet potato.